Porsche really did make a 911 for everyone. The base Carrera brings raw, unfiltered feedback and dainty, elegant looks. The GT3 brings track day resilience and hard-edged high revs. But if you want the ultimate in road car dominance, in point-to-point -point brute force and speed, you only have one option, the turbo. This example here is a 2002 996.2 generation Porsche 911 Turbo. It's a six-speed manual coupe and it presents a stunning combination of midnight blue over Savannah Beige. It's enthusiast owned, having come through to shooting brake via our friends at Drive Collective, the members club for proper petrol heads. This one's coming live to auction on shootingbrake.com, but before you stick a bid in, we'd love to show you what it's like to drive on some slightly more engaging roads. Right, we're in a 996-911 Turbo. Now this is a car which you've inevitably read quite a lot about. You will have read about how it's one of the best looking 911s ever, and certainly is in my opinion. You've read about how it's all wheel drive, how it's got the legendary Metzger engine which derives from the GT1 race cars. And you might have also read that the all wheel drive, the turbo delivery, the slightly fatter curb weight over the base crow makes it numb, less engaging, you know, but usable, fast, all this kind of stuff. Today we're going to drive this on a typical UK day and we're going to see what it's actually like. And we know it's going to be quick, we know it's going to be absolutely brutally competent point to point, but is it fun, is it engaging, is it worth buying? Does the use case stack up to buy this over something else in the same price bracket? These tend to go from anywhere from 30 to 45 grand for a non-X50, non-S like this, which is it's a lot of performance for the money, but is it fun enough to, to buy, to, to use, to enjoy? Now our national speed limit here, just give it a little blip. Second gear, 3000 RPM, boost comes on strong. <laughs> oh my God, I saw it just there, sorry guys. <laughs> wow, um, yeah, so I've got a uh, 906 3.4 Carrera myself. I actually just came out of it to get into this. Uh, such a different experience in this. In that, the power bill is very linear. You never really get the feeling that you're accelerating that quickly, although you actually are, you're carrying a lot of speed. This. People say that these don't feel that boosty, but it does. It's in a way that's so exciting because it's kind of, it's pretty quick from 1500 to 3K. But when you hit 3K, it just, I mean. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, I mean, yeah, I don't know. First off, I don't know what you do with next 50 because that's already just obscenely quick um and second off this is engaging it's just not in the same way that a real drive car is it's different so the steering is more numb i'll give you that it's still quick and accurate and hydraulic and you still get road feel through it it's not gonna wriggle and writhe away in your hands like a real drive car is on one hand that's a shame because i absolutely love that and that's like the 911 thing on the other hand, it kind of doesn't need to because the, the way, the reassurance you have in this with the all-wheel drive power delivery and the power and the brakes and the fact that you've got a bit more weight over the nose means that you do implicitly trust the front end a lot more. So yes, you're getting less information, but you also kind of don't need it as much. Now, just off the back of that, this is engaging for so many reasons. First off, you have to think about the throttle. Between two and a half and three and a half K, this turns into a different car. There's a huge step change. And you want to plan around that, think about that a bit more, and think about how you're going to utilize and deploy that power. That is really fun. So the deployment of the power in itself is so interesting and exciting. You know, it, it's, you wouldn't say it's laggy, because this, I just want to talk about this for a second. Turbo lag. Turbo lag and turbo threshold are two very different things. Turbo lag, is when your car should be in boost, i.e. you're in the turbo threshold, which is 3,000, 4,000 RPM, and you pin the throttle, and there's a delay in the power coming in. That's turbo lag. This doesn't have turbo lag, but it does have a turbo threshold in the sense that you're not on boost until about three, three and a half thousand RPM. So this is key because turbo lag can be annoying. You want to overtake or you want to trim your line in a corner. You pin the throttle and it's not there. Whereas in this, you pin the throttle when it is there, but you need to make sure you're in the right gear, which, I mean, you know, if you buy a manual turbo, presumably you're buying it because you're someone who likes putting the car in the right gear and engaging with the gearbox. So it's not laggy, but it does have a turbo threshold, which makes it really, really exciting. 
and it also makes it very easy to drive and docile around town, which is great. So let's break it down piece by piece. First off, steering. Like I said, it's not tripping and feel. But right now I've got a long sweeper, I've got cams in the road, I know what's going on. I know a lot of what's going on actually, more than you would in any of these cars competitors. So it's not bad, it's just not gonna give you that 911 magic, but that's fine. But it's still just unbelievably fast and accurate and communicative. Brakes, we've got six part Porsche brakes. As always, Porsche test these 25 hard stops from top speed down to 75 mile an hour. On top of that, the pedal feel is unbelievable. I didn't know how much I liked brake pedal feel until I drove a Porsche 911. You know, you feel like your foot is actually touching the brake disc. That's how accurately you can brake in these because the, the pedal feel is just so nice and fine. And that means you can brake that little bit later, dig in that little bit harder and get down the road a little bit quicker. And it's, it's such a nice feeling. Even if, you're not, even if you're not braking hard, it just feels nice. So you're not gonna get them to fade and it looked great underneath those wheels as well. Chassis, as you expect, is very neutral. You rarely feel that it's that rear engine. You don't get the same initial understeer that you get in a Carrera, but if you push hard enough, you will. And if you lift off mid-corner, you're gonna feel it just kind of go whoop, but it's not gonna step out. It's just gonna remind you that you're in a 911, which is a great feeling. That's the, that's the place where most people wanna be. You can get on the power so early. You can even feed it through before the apex and it pulls the nose in. I mean, that's, that's so impressive. Look at this. It's always telling you what, what it wants. I've got the PSM button firmly on here. You'd have to be a bit of a loony to turn it off, to be honest, on the road. But I haven't seen it flash up once. That's how much mechanical grip this car has. I didn't think it was possible for a car to be grippy, all-wheel drive, turbocharged, still be engaging. And that was until I drove a 906 turbo, because this is just, it's all those things. Criticisms, it's fast, it's too fast. <laughs> you get down your favorite road and you're done already. You gotta turn back around and do it again. Um, other criticisms, your friends won't be able to keep up with you, which means you have to get down the end of the road and wait for them, which is really annoying, because it's so fast. All cars on the deck. I was never really someone who was interested in 911 Turbo. I always thought I'm more of a GT3 guy, you know, more of a real drive NA guy. But this is just great. It's so much fun. And you can't really compare it to a Carrera. It gives you different things. And that kind of distance shrinking power is very, very addictive. Okay, okay, so after spending a full day with a 906 Turbo, it's not completely perfect, though it is shockingly close. I did find some pronounced low speed understeer in tighter corners, which felt like a setup issue. Fortunately, this can be dialed out via the 906's factory front camber adjustment. I liked the Metzger's noise, but I thought it was a shame how muted it was. An aftermarket intake and exhaust certainly wouldn't go amiss. It's a shame to lose some of the more esoteric 911 mannerisms to turbocharging and all wheel drive, but the unhinged and hedonistic character of the 911 Turbo's performance really does bring its own appeal. So, in traffic moment, can't really tell you too much about car dynamics. What I can tell you, this is a really nice place to be. So in the last 24 hours, I've driven a 2.7 996 Boxster. I've been driving around in my own 996 Crow 2, which is a very early 996.1. And now I'm in this, which is a 996.2 Turbo. It's midnight blue with a Savannah beige interior. We've got a stitched leather dash, three spoke steering wheel, feels a tiny bit thicker than the usual one, but it's still very hard. It's not padded, which I love, because it means that the feedback that is coming through gets transmitted directly to your hands. Really nice size. This is a very nice place to be. 906 interior has had some criticism in the past. When you sit in my point one, you see why. It's kind of full of cheap, hard plastic. The build quality doesn't feel that good. And it feels slightly unresolved. They sorted a lot of that out for this. And the little details that make the point two, the point two are great. So first off, we've got a glove box in this, which you don't have in the early cars. We've got a multifunction display in the five gauge array, very intimate cabin, sitting very close to your passenger. The windscreen's right here, you can touch it. It's a letterbox windscreen, you can see the haunches out in front of you. You can place the car using them. You've got that classic, amazing 911 visibility that all 911s have. Um, this is wider, but it's not more intimidating. I can see the haunches in my wing mirrors, which is just great. That is the best feeling. You know, if you've been wanting a 911 your whole life, 
you find it gets tough and you see those haunches in the rearview mirror, you know you've made it in life. This, more than anything, it feels like a luxury GT inside. And that, that's a real compliment because that is not all this car is. It's a genuine bona fide sports car, but the fact that it's able to feel like a luxury GT is incredible because you could do some miles in this. You could do a Euro trip in this, you could daily it. What amazing ownership proposition. You could have this as your only car if you really wanted to. And it's the little things that make this a lot nicer than your typical 996. Got a Bose stereo, which is really good. This gear knob, it's a really nice gear knob. It's got this uh, little flash of actual brushed aluminium on the top, and it feels kind of cold and metallic in your hands. Uh, it's got a really nice shifter feel as well. It's a, a bit heavier than the standard Carrera, or at least the my Carrera. Uh, it feels a bit more decisive, which is good because in the Tybo, you're not necessarily flicking through the gearbox as much, you're no, more relying on the mid-range torque. So when you do change gear, you want it to feel very engaging, and then you get into the next gear, got quite heavy clutch, you let the clutch out, boost comes back in and you're off it's oh, what a feeling this feels like military grade weaponry now the rides around town is decent it's not as compiling as a base non-mo30 carrera uh, it's definitely a bit stiffer you definitely feel the road stops underneath you but it's tolerable it's okay you know i've i've definitely had worse it's definitely more compliant than something like an m car it's a ride that's reflective of what this car is and what it's capable of and you've got just enough road clearance to make speed bumps driveways etc doddle uh the splitter up front is unpainted black plastic so it can handle a few things here and there keep in mind this car was sold to compete with the ferrari 360 when it was new in terms of price point performance etc the whole point of this was this was a car you could use every single day it's a car you can live with. You've got back seats. You've got a really generous front. You've got space behind the seats. Great visibility. It's easy to park. It's small. You know, you do all that. And then you get in it, drop it in second gear. I mean, that shouldn't be allowed, really, should it? That's just... <laughs> oh, my God. So if you feed the power in mid-corner, which you shouldn't really do normally, you feel the power being fed through the car, guiding you along. And it's the craziest feeling. So one of the biggest criticisms of 9M Turbo was the noise. And it's not loud, it's not raspy, it's not hard-edged, fine. But it's a turbocharged car, and what always confused me is that motoring journalists, especially when cars are new, always seem to criticize turbocharging overall, and yet, Car enthusiasts love turbos. People so often boost iconic natural aspirated engines. They boost K20s, they boost S54s from M3s. Um, they love 2JZs, RB26s, you know, the S55 and the F80. So car enthusiasts seem to like turbos. The motor engineers seem to not. I like turbos and I like how this sounds because it sounds turbocharged. You hear turbo noises, you hear whooshing. And it's, it's a noise that clearly isn't naturally aspirated, and that, to me, is a, it's a very menacing, purposeful noise. It's not beautiful and crisp like a CSL or a GT3, but it's a noise with intent. You, know, you feel like you can take any car in this. It's just where it's so capable, where that power is so easily deployable. Um, and where the steering and the brakes and the chassis setup and the visibility give you so much confidence in, in getting down a road, you feel like you can brake later and get on the power earlier than anyone else. Now, what's it like when you're not, you know, you're not hooning it, but you're just kind of engaging with it? It's cool, because you just kind of sit in the mid-range, and every now and then you just give it a little squirt, like that. And that's really fun. And then you come to Stansel and you're in this gorgeous, gorgeous Savannah Beige cabin with leather everywhere, Alcantara and the headlining. And we're going down quite tight and technical um, B roads here. Um, by all accounts, that shouldn't be the Nine Levers home territory. And I'm sure it's an absolute missile down, you know, fast sweeping A roads and, and dual carriage roads. But the fact that it can do that as well, that's just mind blowing. It really, really is. Use case. What do you buy this car for? Everything. Everything. You go to shops in it, go to work in it. Go to the Mons in it, do the ring in it, do track days in it, do B roads in it, take it to dinner, park outside the restaurant. It looks great, it doesn't look dated. The other thing is, there is something so inherently iconic about the 996 Turbo specifically. I don't know what it is, maybe it's because this was the new 911 Turbo when I was a kid, 
but something about the context of when this car was released and how it looks and what it is kind of similar to the Ether in unknown 5 it's one of those cars that was just so far ahead of its competitors it punched so hard above its weight and it just looks so aggressive and muscular that this to me this is one of the most iconic 911s ever the 996 Turbo Keep your 911s with Metzger engines sending turbocharged power to all four wheels. Head on over to shootingbrake.com where you can bid on this very Porsche 911 Turbo. With over 100 detailed photographs and a comprehensive description on every listing, buyers can bid with confidence on shootingbrake.com. Shooting Brake is your home for specialists and enthusiast vehicles and we've got some great content lined up for you here so make sure you stay subscribed to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching and see you next time.